Hawks. Once again, this week's show is brought to you for our official legal partner, Jones and White. Uh, we're pleased to join by Lisa Robertson, senior solicitor in their convincing team. Wow, look at you. <laughs> uh, welcome, Lisa. Great to have you. Great. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. You were saying before the cameras are on, you're a massive fan of the show. Uh-huh, absolutely. That's great, thanks so much. I'm the envy of many of my friends. Are you really? <laughs> uh, convincing. Uh, Tim, some of the viewers at home probably won't know. Can you yep. tell us a wee bit more about Sure, absolutely. So, convincing is the, the process of transferring the legal title from one person to another. So, to put it really, really simply, it's buying and selling houses. Um, so, there's quite a bit involved in the process. So, generally from drafting the written offer negotiating the terms of the missives, checking the title deeds, right through to completion we transfer the funds and we deal with the registration so there's there's loads to take in, there's loads involved but um, that's why you have a convincing solicitor to help you. Um, they're there obviously to do all the legal bits and bobs but they are also there to put your mind at ease and just guide you through the whole process to make sure that it's as smooth and simple as possible. So Lisa, what would you say to somebody buying their first property? So for example, me the day I've walked into Jones White, I'm going to buy my first ever property. How can you help me? Yep, okay. So every year we help thousands of first-time buyers get their foot on the property ladder for the first time. Um, we have got a fantastic team who deal with this day in, day out. They know the market, they know exactly what's going on um, and they can help you through our professional negotiation service. So what they do is they find out what it is that you're looking for, what you can afford, and they help you to really refine your search criteria so that you're looking at things that just are specifically suited to what you're looking for. They'll help you come up with a strategy so that you can use that to try and determine what you're going to offer when you are going to offer for a property. Um, and that service is really there just to maximise your prospect of success when you do put in an offer. So you're going to get a flat, so you're not going to sleep in your taxi anymore? No, it's getting a wee bit tight in there. So oh, is it? Aye, Too much activity it's going on in there. <laughs> uh, you got any events coming up? Yes, we sure do. So a week today on the 26th of April, we are running an online event for first time buyers. It's completely free to join. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to discuss more about the process in more depth, um, provide some guidance, just kind of things that you can expect when you're doing it for the first time. Um, we'll point out some common mistakes that we see people making so that we can hopefully help people avoid making those. Um, and so see on that, sorry, I'm sure. you say mistakes. What types of mistakes did the first time buyer make in terms of this process? That will be disclosed on the All right, okay. online event. Amazing. <laughs> what, a, what a professional sign. Uh, is there any way we can get anywhere else we can get in touch? Say yes. they can't make the event. How can they get in touch with you guys? We are on all social media platforms, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, so you can visit any one of our social media platforms and also on our website, which is www.joneswhite.co.uk. Did you do your own first house? Yes. You did? Not with Jones White, but I did do the convincing for my first house. And have you met smoothly? Sure did. And Amazing. I'm still there six years later, I think. Obviously, it's important that when you buy that first house, it's a, it's a big um, financial obligation. So to make sure it all goes run smoothly, it's important to get the right advice. And Jones White, our official partner, will certainly give you that. Are you working for these now? Listen, quite to promote it, Simon. Well, you know, Slaney, you know, Slaney does this. He's still, I just want to get this on camera while you're here. He still lives with his mum. Uh, so if he was to buy, he's thinking about buying his first flat, we can send him here and you can help him. Absolutely. We'd be more than happy to. Perfect. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you very much. Lisa, thank you very much. Yes, welcome to <laughs> Go FC Podcast. Uh, Ginger Little Freak's not here again, so I'm stepping in. Stepping in. That's a career loan, mate. That's <laughs> a career loan. Stepping in for Paul Career loan for the, for the club podcast. It just gets and, worse, doesn't uh, it? It does get worse, but it's, uh, we're joined by. More or Just before we get started, so are you are you taking this on now? Because no, you're part you're of this. No, 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 you're part of this. No, this is no, you. This I'm is your no, gig. Come on. I'm not very good with the question things because I we'll, we'll end up talking about things we shouldn't really be talking about. <laughs> then we we'll need, we'll then we'll need to get cancelled. So just <laughs> be safe because I'm I'll upset people. Right, just ask him like how it. he's doing. How are you doing, Mo? I'm good. good to have I'm you. good actually. Really relaxed. Um, playing golf. Bit of gardening. Good or bad? Uh, I've actually got a wee bit of better actually. Aye, so. Good. Who's Kenny Miller beat me yesterday, Kenny mind you. Yeah. Give him eight shots, so it's quite easy when you get Kenny's eight shots. Kenny's a bandit. Ah, he Kenny's a bandit. A bandit. It's official. He, him and John Hart Decent player. are the two ex-professional footballers. Have you ever got your charity event, a golf event, a golf day, and they two are in your team, they're cheating bastards. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying <laughs> to say it, mate. Just putting that out there. I, I thought Kenny would have kind of like a moral no, compass for you in the day. He's the most competitive man I know. Mm. No, but I do, no, but he played his handicap, though. So, he, like, the, I think he was, what, 38 points? That's his, decent. So he, points. That's why he played his handicap. So, and what's your handicap? I've just got it done at start. New 
Scottish handicap one. system. It's index. Me- What's your index? It's four and a half. The, four point five. Aye. What's your handicap? Your that's diet. A, but that's I'm a bit, That's a high. <laughs> but I'm no <laughs> though. Food. Food's not a handicap. <laughs> starting the diet. Starting the diet yesterday morning at six o'clock in the morning. Woke up. Bowl of porridge. Two bananas. I thought, boom. Text messages. We're at the Donner Shack today. <laughs> right <laughs> in the Killed out two Donners, a shawarma. <laughs> just, just to give the viewers an indication of how much you eat at breath food, walking up two points of steps. Piped. Oh, mate, I fucking knackered. <laughs> it's because I had training last night with the kids. You played in the Premier League. You're fucked getting those two points of stairs. Oh, I know, but we're, we're, I'm getting still fit for Thursday. What's Thursday? Head tennis. Oh, right, we're doing head tennis. Yeah, yeah. Getting fit for Thursday. <laughs> How was your session last night? It was actually really good. Was it? Boys, uh, Jude actually enjoyed it. He said ah, that it was good, it. really good. The Stephen took the Stephen took the, the goalie, only one goalie, two fullbacks, two the fourth defenders, sort of half kind of fullback guys, and we worked on how could we get the ball in. They meant to just two midfielders, and how can they get in relation to the ball? Even at nine, I think you've got to try and help them coach that, try and yeah. get because at nine, right at that level of football, the, the biggest <laughs> difficulty of the kids is they can't get from back to front because everybody squeezes. And they're not comfortable dealing with the ball, so we're just trying to make them comfortable. And I worked on the rest of my passing and movement, and then transferred into a game. And their passing and movement in the game was really good. Yeah, it's no rocket science. Is that what you're missing? Well, obviously you've left Cowden and Beath. What was <clears> that a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, that had two weeks. Yeah. How, how are you reflecting on your time there? Well, actually, it's, it was, I, I kind of feel it was like that, and then like that, and we were just getting to here. Um, but my contract was running out in May, so. It was kind of like a, a sad ending with me and the chairman in, in, a, in a sense that I kind of really fond of him. Um, Donald Finlay in it. Yeah, yeah, Donald Finlay and obviously judging by his kind of post you know, when, when I left the club, it was it was really quite flattering what he'd, he'd said. So um, yeah, we were really close, we spoke every couple of days. Um, but, but I think the, 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 club's, the club's on the right road now. Uh, unfortunately, there's not going to be money as such moving forward so I think that will be an issue for the club but in terms of the foundation and the structure now I think it's a nice wee club That's just talk us through because we speak about this on this obviously when we did it this year talk us through the hard bits the, the, the good bits and the hard bits of being a manager at this level honestly because yes, I'm place. looking at I'm looking at when when I was with Motherwell and then I'm now I was dealing with Cowan Beath players so if you look at what you say to a player on a a Tuesday and on a Thursday so say your Thursday your, ta- your tactical day at any level um, you know come Saturday you say but we worked on this on, on Thursday we touched on it on Friday and you've got that etch a sketch brain you just shake it and it's gone mm. you're like how, how can you know get that we, yeah, it's the following instruction. we talked you through yeah, it sorry. we showed you video analysis of it we walked you through it and you still turn up in the game and you just you're just playing on on instinct and, and unfortunately at our level instinct's not enough. You've got to what, be f- What do you think that's down to? Do you think that's down to the individual want to be an individual sometimes? Or do you think it's like just you no know, really just I, I, it's, I, it's a, that's what I'm all like because you've done you've done you you've done it. You've done it. I would like to do it at some point. So I'd like to ask as many questions as I can on yeah. understanding <laughs> because what's your game Saturday? Against an Edinburgh team that comfortably are sh- easily they're struggling in the league. That's apparent. They've got stipulations in the way they can pick players and stuff. So I get that. But watching your team, who should comfortably go and win five, six, seven—that's my eyes from above. But bad decision making all the time. Again, so thinking, it, why is that? But if you think someone, so again, I only think you can you can only take a player so far. So you can show him. You can see in that scenario he needs to do that. You've worked on it in training. You've showed these these setup that's like two or three scenarios that are going to arise. If he doesn't see the two or three scenarios when they arise, you've done your bit as a coach. Mm. There's only so much a coach can do. But we see on Monday night football that's everything that happens on a football pitch is the manager's fault or the manager's brilliance. It's no. There's 22 individuals there, plus referees that are going to have an impact on that football match. You cannot, as a coach, control all of that. Mm. you can do your best by setting them up and say we want triggers to press here what happens behind the ball when we attack all these things however ultimately if the players don't see it in that moment that's just you kind of control it yeah. what, about the bit, what bits did you enjoy? I just love football so, yeah. it's, it's, so for me dealing with people every day um, and you say you're part time but it's no part time No, your mind is still on it like a full time guy mm-hmm. um, 
you know what I love the mist? See when you you've so I took a boy um from lower level um uh, called Stuart Love, right? And he's no quick, no technically phenomenal, or but anything, just a good, honest pro that any time you spoke, he wanted to. He wanted to do well. And I think that's half the battle. If right. they want to do well, they want to be led, they want to be educated, then it's half the battle. Because everybody's got an education at school, but there's still people that can't be bothered listening to school teaching. Yeah. So there's a big part of that for me. He was the he was the perfect like the pinup boy. Played every week because I knew when a, I'm using the terms a, a, a ball side six went to get on it. He now knew the corresponding move because he'd listened, he'd watched the training, he'd been part of the training. So I go so play every week. Develop, so see when it promotes yeah. up to the pitch and you're the opposite eight, you get in the box. He would do it. Now, if he missed his chance or scoffed it, I can only put him in an area that will heighten the chance of him being successful. But that comes from his willingness and, and understanding of when to go, seeing it real time, what you're talking about, right. decision making. And guys like Lovey, these are the boys that I'll miss. Mm. So, see, are you want to go back and be a manager more? Is it, do you, is it mean a coach you'd, you want to do? Well, listen, it depends on the environment for me. Um, the level, I, I, for me, I think I'm more suited to a higher level being a coach. Um, like I was at Motherwell, uh, first team coach, Premier League, that kind of level. Um, was, that, was that your was that your kind of favourite time in football, coaching at, at a Premier League club? I know, when I, you say when you say that you prefer, not prefer, you see yourself at a higher level. Mm. What's the reason behind that? Why do you say that? Because I need to dilute dilute half the things that I want to put. Do you think they get it? They, they'll get your thinking quicker than well, obviously. I, I, they're, they're at a level already that they're doing majority of yes. the things. It's just about. Instead of doing it five times out of ten, can we get you to seven, eight times out of ten when yeah. you're doing it right? Um, and guys like Alan Campbell are the, the prime example of that, you know. Alan Campbell, willing, yeah. dedicated, a decent enough physique. Clicks on, I'm going to be a professional fitter player. I want to go to the Premiership in England, puts on 10 kilos, bump, 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 starts edu- getting learning, starts seeing mere analysis, does the things you ask him. And now he's on a fortunate looking and probably bounce on again. Yeah. I see your favourite player that you've coached tomorrow. Favourite Scottish player, I would say. Do you know what? I've had a few actually. I think Alan Campbell, I, I really enjoyed. But I like, I like kind of guys that have got a bit of ego and they want to come back at you in that as well. I quite like that. Like that, that kind of no tussle, but that somebody's somebody's opinionated back. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, yeah. I, yeah. because I was that guy. I would go, okay, but why are you asking me to do that? And so as soon as I understood the why, I can then go, oh, I, I get that. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, so. But again, there's boys at all levels you've coached. Like, talk about Brock Watson. I said, drive me nuts, Brock Watson. Like, <laughs> moaning about this and moaning about that. But, you know, still you enjoy coaching them. Yeah. Still you enjoy speaking to them every day. Um, that's what I miss the most, just getting up every day and having a plan for something. What was it Campbell did to all his win bonuses, you said? I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning this, but I think early on in his motherwell career, I think he got some certain amount of bonuses or whatever. And rather than go and get in the the stupid watch or the <laughs> the A-class Mercedes or whatever they're buying nowadays. Um, he, he, he put his mum's gym and uh, mum's garage, we garage at the side of the house and, and turned into a gym. So again, when you're saying, oh, his, he's put on eight kilos in the last 10 months, you go, well, that's why. Wow. And I'm telling you, fit boys, fitness, dedication, and the wee bit of sprinkling with a good touch and a wee pass, that's what you need. You'd first of all need to be an athlete. It's course. amazing how many times a senior pro will tell you to do the right things and you sit there and you think, aye, ah, okay, whatever. But see, I think now, more so than ever, I'm 42 this year and hips are killing me. <laughs> I had neck operation. I've got pins and needles down my legs and arms. It's mm. constant, I think. Did I look after myself as well as what I could have done while playing football? But me, but... but sh- it's your style though as well. No, I know, but it's not, not just style, but what I'm trying to say is just for that extra wee 10% of doing something above and beyond can make maybe 20, oh, 30, 40% difference. I never difference. had the same, Kev. I never Aye. just fucking, I just played people it. Ask, people ask you, what's your regret? My regret's no the bad things I did or the good things I did. My regret is, see when I was in the gym because I thought I was six foot three and I could hold me people off, mm. I could have been bigger and stronger like Duncan Ferguson where he ragged all people out the way and thought oh because there was guys you caught against you thought oh god he is just stronger than me today but I could have been as strong as him mm-hmm. but I chose not to go in the gym because I thought I didn't need to mm. and that's the encourage- that's what I would say like, that, to that, kids that, listening or people who's watching today or parents are watching have got kids 
be prepared to go and do that with extra time. See, I would say you got every note of your career. Am I right in saying that? You wouldn't have been one that never that half arsed it. No, I was never a half arser. Yeah. Um my problem was I was used to the best of the best too young. That range of- so then it was the best information, the best diet, the best players. So when I then come out of that, I'd already had this education. So when I went to like a wool or a mill or whatever, and I was dealing with players that weren't exposed to that information, etc., I would get frustrated. So I looked at probably like the money guy. Mm. But I wasn't, I was just like, that's not how it's done. This is something needs to be happening. Why are you, mate? Mm. So you, can, you can identify with that as well. There was, a, yeah. there was a bit of that that I think that's probably done me in the most that I would just go, what we doing bikes for this afternoon? Why do I need to get my pulse up to 150 on a bike? You ever try to get your pulse 150 on a bike? It's hard, mate. <laughs> so we're all, like, the ma- no, we're, we're ma- my manager was like, you need to get 150 for 45 minutes. So this is a, this is a recovery session. 150 on pulse on a bike. Mate, I was doing all this and all that on my bike just to, to move my arms about to get up to the 150. Uh-huh. And I was just, this dies me nuts. Mm. So no, I was, I was the opposite, mate. I was easily led. So when I went left, say, like, I yeah, never played at the level, obviously, first team. When I went to the Swindon and it was a wee, not a shambles, but. I still love that. I, I, I was aye. like, oh, this is fucking brilliant. But when you look back now, biggest waste know, of time. Yeah, but it just comes from immaturity. Though. Maturity, uh-huh. And we've Quite all done that. Uh-huh. I would agree with that. Immaturity is a big part. But, the, but the, what I meant was that. You've tried to take the negative things you did in your career into your coaching. Coaching, yeah. Aye. So you try to you get like you get frustrated on a Saturday because standards and things like that. So like you've learnt from it, and mm. I, I would learn from that because mm. it's like it's. it's Mate, slow. I swear to you, right? We had Matt Ritchie at Swindon, right? And nobody in Swindon gave me a harder time than me. Honestly, man, I hate myself. And I used to call him a busy bastard when they come on night suit. You're boring, and I look back now and think. Like, what a fucking dick. He's playing in the pit. Because he's going to the gym after training and we're going to a pot and, and we're ah, slaughtering him for it. And at no. the time you think, man, he's fucking, what a loser. It's just a maturity. Nah, it's just a maturity, mate. Huh? But when you think back now, why do, you, why do you brand him that? Because he's fucking doing his because job. Because he knows that you, you know he's doing the right thing. thing huh? That's it. It's your, in, in, it's your your insecurities. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's actually wild when you think about it. You, you, you slagged, you slagged, you slagged off hard. other good guys that actually went above and beyond and yeah. you're sitting there thinking, he's a fucking... He's not going to the Tuesday club with us. And I'm out in the Tuesday club thinking about going to a Wednesday club onto a Thursday club. club exactly. You know what I mean? That is he's, crazy, still, yeah. he's still in the gym. <laughs> and you're like, that was the difference. <laughs> it's just wild. Oh, but oh, listen, oh. when they change it for the world. <laughs> uh, uh, so when did you first get into coaching? Was it while you were playing? Do you know what? It sounds mental, right? See, when I was like 10, 11 year old, we, I used, we used to always get like some Morris Malpass and, and Kenny Cameron and... and Remember Kenny Cameron, right? Dundee, uh, well, But Malpass and, and uh, who else would come down? Paul Hegarty, Paul Sturrock sometimes, Jim McLean would sometimes put sessions on. So I was I was fascinated by the coaching quite quick, like being coached. Because that, you know, I'd be a bit of a belter here, but I actually liked school, eh? I mm. liked, I liked actually learning something. So see, when I was getting coached for like the boys at Morris Malpass, who was my hero, I just loved it. So yeah. I've always been kind of into it right but I never to, to answer your question I never started coaching until I was what 31 32 just quit football went to Norway and yeah started then is that when you quit 31 I quit 31 I why just, just had enough had enough of listening to, just listening to donuts mate top up and I'm like <laughs> nah sorry I'm still you take this show mate if you didn't like donuts talk about <laughs> no but I'm not going to be bad on it and you know laughing at that but yeah. just like just nah my body was kaput couldn't have run the length of myself because I kept getting injuries and so on. That. But that was at 32. 32 I was, I think. You were young as well, Kevin, didn't you? I was 33, 32, 33. I, I, was, I was like you. I just thought, nah, I've had enough of this. Mm. But I, I didn't, uh, I would, I, I always wanted to be a manager because I think I could, with life experiences and things, I think I can relate to people. I think I can talk to people. I think I can get the best out of some people. Coaching was never a thing, but now when I coach kids, I like coaching kids because they're hoovers for information. Mm. So you, if you give them enough information, one or two might get it, and it might be the difference between them getting picked up at a young age and blah, mm. blah, blah. But coaching adult kids, a- adults like your group, I think I would maybe struggle with that because I think I would get too frustrated. But so it's just a learning curve of it. The minute I'm at that point where I have the, to understand... But the, that's where you need to adapt your aye, So that's where, aye, so that's where I'm, that's where I'm at. You're... you're, you're 
anticipating that you're going to get everybody to understand it. Aye. But there's 22 people there that oh. learn different. Yeah. Learn that's differently. It. And you've only got two hours within that two hours, you've got half an hour of warm up or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They need games, you need to give them detail, you need to give them a wee bit of analysis. So it's like. Aye. It's, it's no easy at the, the part time level. What about in terms of recruitment? How hard did you find that? For when, Like you say, man, you've not got maybe the budget that you would that you would think you would need. It wasn't so much that. It was like. How did you recruit? How did you, how did well, you find well, this players? Is what, this is what we've changed. So we just. Employed, uh, not employed. We got volunteers to to be scouts because we, there was nothing like that when. It, so when I took over with like bottom of the league in this in the league two, like when we were bringing in players, it was like agents phone you up and you go like, come up for a couple of days, and it was like you're just looking for something. Yeah. Sometimes you know if you look for something good, you'll find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than evaluating, well, oh, he's miles off it. Mm. Because you're, you're hoping that this guy's going to be the difference for you, like stay up in the league and save the club and all that. So, but now it's just, there's, there's, a, there's a clear set up, there's a wee bit of structure changing within the club. And it's also knowing what do you get for 125 quid a week? Mm. What do you get? I know. But then you get wee nuggets that, that are came from maybe a, a league that's just below you or whatever. But what we try to do, Basically, was when we when we ended the season with zero players and zero staff, I said I need I need people that want to be here. Mm. So if your first conversation with me meeting in a Starbucks and the MA was money, I said you're not going to be for me, man. Mm. I said if that's your focus, it's not for me. And but when that happens, at the end of the day, if if I'm going to pay you 120 quid, and Cy Ferry's team's going to pay you 300 quid, where are you going? The difficulty is, like you say getting boys that just want to go and play football and mm. give them give themselves an opportunity a lot of them like you say 300 quid to 125 quid it's it's a difficult it's a difficult it's an easy decision for them yeah of course uh, but do you know what see the difference between a 100 pound player and a 500 pound oh. player there's nothing in it no. mm. and it's like the same when, when i was at motherwell and i used to speak to the manager and say how much is he on you know just so you've got a kind of an array of what's happening oh he's on 800 quid okay how much is he on or oh, he's on two four for instance I go, he's better than him, but it's perception. This is how he gets 2-4, because he played with X, Y and Z yeah, six right. years ago. But we're talking about here and now. Yeah, yeah, What's yeah. he doing for us now? Oh, I take him every day of the year, bump out the door next year. He's now not on 2-4, but he's on 14, maybe 1,400. And, and, you know, so you just start shaving and, and, and getting a better looking squad, a hungrier squad, that, a younger squad that, yeah. that are more affordable for your club. See, just on counting beef when you did take over bottom league two did yeah. you have a look at the squad did you assess it first and think I can keep these up no nope. never well, obviously I knew some players because I'd sometimes played with them or, or you no know, like guys that are coming down the leagues and whatnot. and you know what they, they, that whole group they worked their tail off and they, they were loyal to the system and they were loyal to what we did and try to do um, but we just lacked quality I would just lack quality in certain areas. I mean, I didn't think we properly got turned over by anybody. But it was like, honestly, it felt like, oh, how have we missed that? Like, I'm talking one inch, one yard tappings, hitting the post and going out. Oh, how's that even possible? It's like it's written in the stars. Mm. I actually felt at times ago, we should never have lost that game today. But I kind of feel it's similar with this year as well. It's end of the day players win your matches. Eh? You can put other sessions on and shape and everything you like. It's players win your matches. If you get somebody you can check inside and put it in the bottom corner, if you push past the post, easier. it's not yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still yours. That's, a, that's a thing through any league, any division. If you've got a stalwart middle from middle to front, like a good striker that's going to score you 20 odd goals a season, a midfielder that can dictate a game in a certain half, he wants to head and kick it and defend. That's the, the basis of a good team at any level, surely. Well, if, when you look at the top boys, we talk about them all the time, they're peps, all these boys. They all, they're all humble enough to say, we win games because we've got better players. We've uh, got better money. Says that a lot, doesn't right. he? He's, he's so humble about it. Yeah. Yes, of course, he puts his sprinkling on it and makes some different gravy, of course. But Poster Coglu is winning the league because he's got better players at the minute. Right. For Mike, you're going to tell me Michael Beale can't set up a team? Of course he can. Mm. All Mike Beale now needs is a war chest to go and get better players to help Rangers win the league. That's how, how, are you, uh, how are you with defeat? Obviously, not the type of person you are. You are, you are quite intense. I'm, I'm actually, I'm probably the opposite of what you think I am. Really? Man? I, I look at it total pragmatically. I don't look at it emotionally. 
there's times if somebody's maybe no done something that the group bought into, and if somebody's no done it, then for me that's 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 a blazing for me. Mm. But if, if if you've been beat because they were better than you, so like when you turned us over, like uh, in the second game at home, mm. we should have scored four that day, but whenever, and you beat us what three now? Mm. So it's like I look at it and go, well, nine times out of ten, that's we're two and up at that point that they go and score. Alfie tries to dribble out when I told him before the game, you're two touch Alfie today, mate. Two touch Alfie. Get it, play it. Wins it. Tries to dribble inside. Gives the ball away. One nothing. So then I go, Alfie, see? I gave you a crystal ball before the game, mate. You're two touch. Mm. You want to dribble? We always want nothing. I can't do nothing. I go him and go, I can't do nothing with that. Yeah. So it's more about evaluating what you see because, but again, you know who's like, so if you listen to Arteta, every week, we, we lost that game or we drew that game, but that was good, that was good. The processes were right. The quality was right. The attitude was right. But sometimes you win and lose a match. Mm. So I, I, I try to look at it more that way rather than emotion. And you play great and you lose one nothing. How can you go mad at that? No, you can't go mad at that. Huh? I know. But you go away and you're like, oh man. But then like you say, if you had to sit back and watch it and think what was good in the game, mm. there will be majority of it was good. It's just moments in the game that have to find how it's went. But you said something interesting there. You went, you've let me down. They've not let me down. We're all in this together. Aye. It's like, it's the collective. Picking that up more. No, but it's, no, but it's, a, it's a collective. Because <laughs> if you start, but there'll be subtle words Aye. that players can start latching on to. Right, what yeah, you know yeah. what it's like. Aye, I know. So it's about... That's the thing about management. You can't get the wee words wrong, mate. Aye. Because players will latch on to everything that you say. Aye. Some will. So talk us through like, a typical week for you as a cow and beef manager. So if you play Saturday, what would you do? Would you uh, analyse the game Sunday? Would you watch the game? What, what would be your what would Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? I used to be neurotic with that. And then again, I thought I need to be more efficient with my time. Because if if I'm putting so much time into an analysis and then you relay that analysis, but you're not seeing the benefit of it. Then why do it? So for me, I would, I would, I would, I, would, I did less. But if I went to a first team Premier League level, I'd be on it straight away. Straight away yeah. Of course, I would. Um, it'd be mere individual meetings, unit meetings, of course. But with these boys, they got the, they got the clips. It was up to them to look at it. And I said to every single one of them, if you look at your clips and you want to come and speak to me about it, I'll, I'll see the general stuff. But if you want individual stuff, then I'm I'm here for you. But I wouldn't go and chase it right. because these boys are getting up hungover on a Sunday probably let's be honest right. um, they're going to their work Monday they're digging ditches they're working on roads they're eating cheese sandwiches for their lunch they're probably getting a Greg's before they come to training on a Tuesday and you're trying to make him a better football player but the guy's 28 and he's going I'm not going to be a football player no, I feel like that in the morning and this is the, Greg's uh, this I feel flat for the podcast it's tough <laughs> it's really tough <laughs> but it's like, no, that, right, it's right. like that disconnect that this is my career yeah. but it's not their career mm -hmm. and this is why I want the younger boys that might want a career because you get buy-in yeah 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 but totally I mean I'm, I'm so like when I've got Ian Davison coming down who's what 40, 39 Phenomenal 48, guy. 48, Davo's, isn't he? Phenomenal I played with him, he's a good guy, isn't he? Davo was Davo in the, he came to What a guy, man. Fucking runners. <laughs> so he used to shake me all the time, he used to sit up, I said, wait, Feza, you're a fucking runner. Every time a goal went in, he'd blame me for my runner. He was doing it <laughs> somewhere for a week, and he went back up the road with a North East accent. That's oh, his accent's wild, I've never aye. heard an accent like that. It's Kirkcaldy's fella. And then he, ended up, he signed for two years, he signed as a YT for two years, and then he ended up for Scotland. He was all right, a nice kid. But again, no. Doesn't need the money. Just loves football. A good neck looks after oh, himself. Oh, mate, he's six uh, percent body yeah, fat, man. Uh, Purple hair, no, he loves all that. Uh, he's a good boy. Ah, yes, he, he was. He was worth his weight in gold. Uh, right, good wee insight into. That's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, part time management. We're going to do a bit about his career. Hi, we're going to talk about oh, the, the, the big well, teams you played well, for. Well, we've done we're them, but we've done. Well, been Aye. on before. We've done. Messed up was on your career at Rangers, wasn't it? Yeah, always is. Uh, well, we'll go away for Rangers. We'll go into Sheffield Wednesday and Wolves. A couple on. of big clubs. Very big clubs, in fact. Any big clubs so when you've played for a Rangers? That's the thing. That's probably how I would lead into that. Again, it's, you're totally spoiled, though, eh? Mm. Like, you're totally spoiled at the big two up here. Because I remember going into 
like Sheffield Wednesday, which is a big club and, 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 a, and a, an institution down in England, but I'm going in going, this carpets have got a funny smell, eh? <laughs> like, wee things like that. Uh, like, I'm just going, this is kind of minging. Like, uh, these, these are the wee things that I pick up and I go, what's lunch today? Oh, we're through there and through there. And I'm like, this looks like a barn. No, and I'm I'm no I'm no. Uh, you're fair, I'm, 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 I'm no that, that, that guy, but I'm, I'm just looking at the comparisons, going, training pitch has not been rolled today. Eh? I just done these wee <laughs> things, and I'm just going, God, I'm being spoiled, mm. being really spoiled. But it's funny you say that because even the, that Legends game, I don't think they'd mind me saying that. You sit with guys like Crossass and Lustig and kind of asking them the same things about their career after left like, and they're like, this is a bit of kind of. Downer after that, eh? you just kind of get yourself kind of back up to that because of the way you're treated at these. But then I went places. to Wolves for, for there, and that was okay. I was on a par, right? But it wasn't just the building; it's the behaviours of the, the people. The attitude and the, the, the behaviours of the people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm I'm looking at Darren Anderton going, "Can still watch you in the telly now, you know?" On time in the gym. Okay, he was injured a lot. Training, loved football, no flash, and then then you start feeling, "Oh, this is this feels like." what I was used to kind of thing um, training pitch rolled everything immaculate Hoddle was your manager coming in and just talking to you like he's one of your mates oh he mm. was pure class but was it that mindset every day at Wolves or was it right. Rangers there was a hit. yeah 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 because you said Paul Lins, Kenny Mars all these boys yeah. all top players right? so the, again top players top behaviours it's not just that they've got a good touch it's how they behave day to day yeah Joey and Lescott wow guys like that so it's again it's not just we I sometimes think professional football players get the label professional football player but it's just a label but professional is a behaviour if you're in a professional lawyer it's your behaviours mm. you're still studying when you're 50 you're still looking into cases yeah. when you're 50 yeah. it's constant making yourself better Was Hoddle top amazing you think he, could he have been like a pet of his time he was ah uh, he was just suave. He was like James Bond, eh? Was he? Ah, he was just suave. I think we that, like that, that, never, <laughs> never, never got, never really. He was he never got irate. Really, just made you feel disappointed in yourself if you took a bad touch of that. Mm. Was but, he tactically good? Mo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every every week he just give you two pointers. Boom, boom. You're doing this. You're doing that. Your opponent does this and that. Boom, go and play. It wasn't overly over the top. Yeah, but it was just how he treated people. Eh? He was such a gentleman. Did he join so, in? Yeah. Amazing. Still the best yeah, player? Yeah, still great. No, he was... Insfee Hoddle would have been good to see in a five side. Well, I think when you listen to even Glenn Hoddle on the commentary, oh, so he's, he's very good. He's, he's very good. For somebody who they would, in some the modern game would call a dinosaur in terms of when his generation was, you know what I mean? Like, you know how like, a lot of people are calling like, people back in the day, oh, they are dinosaurs. No, 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 you would never no, label no, that. You would never label that him because yeah. the way he talks about the games like the modern well, games. Modern so coach. probably in his day, he was miles ahead of the... What what was his style of play back then? What was kind of set up and formation and we we I think we, we were four three three, four three three we were. Was it playing it for the back? I always feel like if it's on a plate for the back, play for the back. If somebody's set up to press, miss it. Out. It's it's no rocket science. We and was Hoddle saying that back then? It was just common. We didn't need to say it. It was no. common sense. And again, we, we we were brought up in a generation where you had to evaluate yourself because the manager wasn't spoon feeding you. Yeah. Not at all. Have you, no. Were you spoon fed as a player? Never. He is now, thought. <laughs> Ladle fed, he is now. <laughs> so there was a lot of onus on the player. Yeah. Um, and it would be the same with you boys, eh? But it's, everything seems to be in a manager now. Somebody slips, it's the manager's fault. Mm. He's also played under Paul Sturrock, character. Remember he was in the hot tub with a cowboy hat on? I've never, I've seen never, that. I've never, I think I, I, think I played against the Plymouth side. Was he behind your Plymouth? Ah, he's like, he's Plymouth side. He's done well back Plymouth, in the day. Aye, Paul started, but I've never, um, I've never actually came across him. He's done, he's done actually quite well as a manager, didn't he? Yeah, his manager aye. record would be good, mate. Yes, aye. Yeah. What was he like as a manager? Um, quite black and white, you know, like, quite, quite, I would say fair, like, I would say fair, but he had a good coach and, um, John Black, John, um, my God, that's terrible. I forgot this man's name. Jesus Christ, he's, he's assistant. John Bartley. John Bartley, right. Sorry. Um, and he was he was a good coach. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a bizarre, bizarre football club. Bizarre time down there. That's uh, what it was. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday? Yeah, it just felt bizarre. Was he your only manager at Sheffield Wednesday? Well, I left in four weeks or something like that. Did you, why? They left me at the squad. 
after four weeks. But I was, I was doing there, I, was, I did pre-season with Rangers, they said Sheffield Wednesday, I want you, I went, oh, I don't want to go, I don't want to just stay at Rangers and fight, oh, you're not going to play, Hutton's coming through, okay, I get that. Um, but I ended up, I went there, they never even gave me a salary, I went just, just to play. So I said, okay, I'll come, I'll just turn out X amount of games and bounce, that's what I was thinking. I went down there and they had alright players, like, alright. So what year is that? Uh, 2006. Which, so, so see, when you say you went down there without a salary, would the Rangers just give you money to go? And I got paid off right. the Rangers. Um, so then I thought, right, okay, I've got money there that I can just go and, because they said, oh, we've used up our budget. And I'm going, but that, who was my agent at the time? How's this been allowed? <laughs> Coming down for a Rangers player, playing for money. <laughs> and then no getting again because of some guy from Canada or something. I'm going, oh, this is mental. So I remember he said, oh, you're not in the squad today. I went, what? I played against West Ham through the week. Ah, you're not in the squad this weekend. And I can remember it straight away. It just shows you how stupid I was when I was younger. I went, it's all right, aye? He went, aye. I went, I'll not be back, aye. <laughs> he went, no, because you said that you go up the road and spend time with your family and that family. I said, I don't want to wake up and play football anymore. Uh -huh. I said, come on, I'll not be back, aye. Picked up my boots. Even left my shinnies. Picked up my boots. I was driving up the M6 and I phoned my agent. I said, uh, he said, what are, you, what are you? He said, I'm just driving up the road. He said, what for? See, I'm not in the squad tomorrow. morning. I said, I've just chucked it. I said, I've just said I'll not be back. And then on the Monday, I signed for Wills. So does Glenn Hoddle phone you then? Did you get a phone call from Glenn Hoddle? No, it was a Sunday night. I got, I got a phone call from the agent saying, look, Jackie McNamara's just done his cruise shit. They want you doing to sign. So I just, okay, bump, quick turn around, back down to Wolverhampton and sign for Wills on the Monday. The life of a football player, my dear. I know, but just saying the audacity to go. Is that right? I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back. <laughs> no, but see if they were playing me a salary. Because I felt hard done by that when they paid yeah. me salary. And then when I came, they put me in a, it was like a motel, you know the motels you see in the serial killer shows <laughs> in America? Uh, it was... Like that? Zzz, zzz, the, <laughs> no, I, aye, it was like one of these things. And I'm going, I'm, I'm used to the motel house and Mar Hall and all that. And I'm, this, I'm like, oh, this is torture. And they never put me in the squad. That was like the straw. So straw see, on that, I, I think, I, I'm thinking you're like... <clears throat> You started at Rangers, so a good setting, good different environment, and then you go down and it's disappointing. I think it's easier or harder the other way. So are you sense. saying, do you look back now and think you should have maybe ad just adapted to the circumstances? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no what I'm because... thinking is... <clears throat> yeah, but, but I know you're going with this. I'm thinking, like, imagine you started at, uh, started at a Rochdale. Well, look at Alan And you went to Bristol City, uh -huh, of course, and then you fucked uh -huh. away to get into a move to maybe like a Celtic or Rangers or a, what, what, a, a big club. And you aye. feel like you've won the lottery. And aye. Aye. So do you, do, you, do you be that person where most said, oh, fuck this, I'm way up the road? Or you just say, well, this is how it is. Uh -huh, that's what I'm saying. Aye, do, you, so, do you look back now and think you should have just adapted to what, what was happening at Sheffield Wednesday? It was, or was that, it beyond that, that bad that you couldn't? It was that fight or flight mode that you're in. You make, this, you make poor decisions when you're in fight or flight. All right. But football was fight or flight for me uh, because I was just oh, all the time. So when that, I'm saying, I just couldn't get my head around it. Uh -huh. No getting paid. And I'm turning up and there's boys there that couldn't play 10 yard pass and mm. you're, you're not in the squad. I just couldn't get my mind around it a wee bit. Eh? Yeah. I, listen, I do regret being that guy, but that's what it is, isn't it? See, on that, on that thing, like you're saying there about guys, you know, I think when I went to Lo and to Rochdale and I went down there thinking, fucking hell, the Premier League reserves, top scorer, blah, 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 fucking can't quite get in the first team, so I went and went to get some games and I thought, oh man, these are shit. When what I, what I should have really been saying was, I'm fucking shit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because uh -huh, I've dropped reason. my... I am, I'm here on loan for a reason. And then I was like, after three games, I said to Parky, uh, Stephen Parkin, I think Stephen Parkin, I kind of did this, I need to go back up to Sunderland. I, thought, mm. I was at you, I was in a fucking, the, the Roadhouse Hotel, fucking side of the road, lights flashing, fucking guys chatting the door, you're like, what's going on? I need to go back up to Sunderland. It made me realise, go back up, get the head down, mm. work a bit harder. Mm. And make sure you stay at that level. I make sure you yeah. appreciate your surroundings. That's where loan moves are good, mate, not just when it goes ah, well, but yeah. also oh. when it doesn't go well, gives you that realisation. I, I didn't always come back, think, didn't I? If I didn't go to Rochdale, I don't think I would have, I don't think I would have made it. Mm. I genuinely believe So it was worthwhile then. It was definitely worthwhile, but it's amazing when you're younger, the decisions that get through your head there. Uh -huh. And like, we are trying to advise younger guys now mm -hmm. about making good choices. Mate, I made but my debut with Swindon Rough. No way. Thursday night, Tony Hill pub quiz. Boys like that, you're coming out, getting to know the boys. Still ended up, remember, looking at my fuck. I wasn't a big drinker up until then, mate. 
I remember looking at my clock, it was half two on a Thursday night, and I was thinking, what the fuck, man? Trained Friday, done well in training, still obviously, and then played Saturday, got man of the match. And then that was just a recurring theme for the season, mate, because the boys didn't love that. It works, but it works, exactly. <laughs> so fucking three times a week, you're it. Did you? I went out one time. Best year of my life. I went out. My but you look back now and you think, oh, what the fuck I was I thinking? If a player there? did that now, you'd be like, oh, oh you go off your nut. Even things like, like when you're not in the squad, right? And you still should turn up to the game and respect your teammates and be there to support them. And I thought, oh, my mates are coming down for sure. I'm going out tonight. Fuck it. Out that night, absolutely steaming. Coming at three, four in the morning. The boys are right, get the tickets ready, we go to the game. So I thought, we'll go and get a big fuck off Carvery first. Right? So I thought, get a Carvery and that, and then we up to the games. I'm on the squad. So I've left my phone in the car. Fucking talking into the roast beef, all the, all the trimmings, everyone. The phone's been ringing for 15 missed calls I've got in the car. In the squad. It's in the fucking squad, winter. Oh. Rocked up to the game, smell a drink, and I thought, yeah, that was me banished. And I thought, fucking hell, what a dick. What are you mm. doing? Just like be professional. <laughs> Case you, something happens. You, would you never have been like that, Mona? No chance. No, no, never. <laughs> no chance. Because I was, uh, okay, we were guilty of the going out on the Tuesday. Saturday and a Tuesday, we were guilty of that. Yeah. Um, that seemed to be the culture at the time, uh, wrongfully by the way. But nah, no going out at night for a game. That no, no, no. That was a common thing, wasn't it? Who's got the best Tuesday club? Uh, Tuesday was like, a big nightmare. Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday, we played reserve games Tuesday, mate, and all you'd be talking about is the night out. We were Monday night, Baja Beach Club in Newcastle. Every Monday without fail, we were in that Baja Beach it's Club. Not. Fucking not a problem. Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. What were you, Go trash? Ah, yeah. Trash, trash back in the day. But all the big, all the big hitters would be there, mate. Oh, aye. Remember seeing Lenny in trash all the time and <laughs> even last or not, mate? They boys loved it. I remember yeah. Aiden playing a Champions League game on the Tuesday and he'd been out all, all, all night Saturday playing the Champions League on uh, Celtic Park on a Tuesday and ripping it up, mate. And now nobody, nobody does it now. No, nah. Nah. The thing is with the camera phones as well, oh, you get... Oh, man, I missed the camera phone back in my day. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Jail, like well, so how did Wolves go more? Did you do well Wolves? I did alright actually um, I think I played about 17, 18 games for that period where I joined to, to the end of the season but then Jackie came back in so the, the whole thing with Jackie signing with, with Wolves it was it was me and Jackie were on the list so I went I flew to Portugal with my, my big mate Webby and my, my phone went a wee daft Motorola phone and he said look Celtic I'll never let Matt Namara go. He said, so you're next in line. I thought, perfect. I'm like, ah, I'm going to Wolves, great. Reading the paper a day later, because obviously there was no internet and all that. Mm. It is. So I just opened the paper, bump, Matt Namara signed. So I spoke to Jack, he said, oh, he said, Celtic farted about me my salary. I said, well, I'm driving down to Wolves and they agreed verbally with, with Hodder what he was going to get. So then Celtic then upped the offer more than what Wolves were gaining him, but he said, no, 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 you messed me a bit with that. Right, so right. I'm going, I'm getting hold of my word. So again, mate, you're looking at yeah, a three-year right. deal with Wolves for me on decent enough money at yeah. the time to Jackie getting that. Jackie then does his cruciate, six weeks later they're phoning me again. So when he then got fit, I was like the plug, the stopgap. Yeah. So when he came fit, he said, we kind of gave you another yeah. fallback in our deal. Yeah. Does it make sense? My tell it just and three bits. Aye, wee, wee tiny things, we sliding door moments, eh? Jackie, good player, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, great boy as well. Uh -huh. A lot of time for him. Uh -huh, he's, he's a great good. guy, Jack. Uh -huh. Is that a good dressing room down there? There was quite a lot of Celtic like, Oh, bro, quite person. a lot of Scottish boys. Uh, yeah, no, it was Kenny, Colin uh, Cameron. Ken, Ken, uh -huh. But it was a lot of good boys, you know, even the Mark Kennedy. Remember Mark Kennedy? Uh -huh, oh, oh, great boy, man. What a, what he, a he, he, said, he used to drive up. Did Alex play in your team? No. Who? Uh, I think Ray. Was he older? No, no. No. But like, what did Kennedy used to do? Drive it? He used to stay in uh, Alderley Edge. So he said, What are you doing tonight? Because I was obviously new. He said, Come up, come up with me. I was like, I need a bother, I. So I'm just turned up this way a pump. said, Oh, this is cool. He goes into this lift and it just goes. Right so his lift opens up. And he's his. And he's loving it. I was like, Oh, this is a different level. Eh? So I'm, he said, Come on, just, just uh, jump in with me. We'll go to training on the Monday. And he had a yellow Lamborghini. I'd never seen a Lamborghini wow. before. I'm going, I didn't even really ken this guy. Yeah, yeah. And he's got a Lamborghini. What's going on down here, man? Ah, oh, but he was a good lad. Called his cell Uncle Smirnoff. How <laughs> <laughs> was Ince? He was, he was, he kind of reminded me of Barry Ferguson a wee bit. Uh -huh, a bit intimidating. Just that guy that's just used to everything being bang on and if somebody wasn't at it, he'd berate them and was on them. And, but um, he was actually quite likeable. He was a nice enough guy in the dressing room and that yeah. I, um, 
but aye, he, he, he basically had a free run, aye. Uh, so if he made a bad pass, the gaffer wouldn't be on him and that. You play against him? Yeah, I don't think I did, no. Can you put him in his all time Man U 11? Does he? Played, well, he puts him in ahead of the first year. I don't know if he just does that Inns for effect. Ince was class. Ince was good. Hmm. The role he played, he was very good. Man U Liverpool under Milan. Must have had a few yeah. big time shouts. Nah, yeah. oh, he, but he did it a wee bit. Uh, funny, he, he wasn't doing it like he actually. Well, maybe he was a wee bit, but no, but no in a no in a bad, bad way. way uh-huh. go, nah, he, he was he was actually alright. Eh? Uh-huh. But you wouldn't look to be seeing big dressing rooms. You know, look to be big time. No, nah, people bring people on you stay away. Like, see nah. if you were big time at Rangers, Neil McCann, and that would just fuck. How was McCann? You see him on the telly now. Great he's boy, mate. Good analysis. I think he's very good. Yeah, I think he's a good coach as well. I've heard that. Nah, he's good. Uh, what about like in terms of Ferguson? I know this is a hard question, but like when you how, Paul Lynch was obviously a top player, how close would Ferguson be to that? Barry, Barry in his day, I thought Barry was. I thought Barry was world class. Did you? Yeah? I, I think he's world class. Mate. So have you seen like you trained with Paul Lynch? Barry was better. I know I'm not putting on him. No, but you know that. when you see you get you get influential players right, and you get you get players that make everything look poor. So like see when David Tumble does something, it just looks silk. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? But like uh, when Barry used to do something, it would just look bonny. I could make the same pass as Barry, but it wouldn't look bonny. It would look a bit loose. Do you know what I mean? So I would say Barry's mere silk than Paul Lynch was. But mm-hmm. look at how influential Paul Lynch was. Paul Lynch, I thought Barry should have played for Arsenal. Mm-hmm. Blackburn over, come on. But he was brilliant at Blackburn. Uh, no, but still. Was. I know, but like Why? you see... Uh, Blackburn were having a go at that time, weren't they? It was York and Cole and all that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah <laughs> of course, but... I think Barry, I think, like Arteta, Arsenal, class, getting the ball, spraying it about, running games, he's just it. Mm. Uh, I thought he was... So you think you could have played for one of the top clubs in England? Easy. They don't, uh, Easy. I think you could. I know, have you heard these, uh, the one memory that just came back when you were at Rangers, you was your first old film, you had to Matt Larson at corner. Is that right, man? Mm. I said that. Mm. Imagine that. What age were you? Oh, I'd have been, what, 20? 20? That's oh, incredible, isn't it? Wow. That's a, that's a memory. Uh, was his movement good? He was. Yeah, good he wasn't. He, his, his movement. Ah, he was. Uh, he was really good in the other. Because oh, they, they used to play. Right, they were putting Newman there. on him, and he was he was getting goals off of Bat and Newman, and then they ended up changing it. But the the boy that was um, who was the boy that played with Galatasaray, played with Liverpool. But was it Barosh? Milan Barosh. I played against him for a Turkish club, and he played for Galatasaray, mate. And I was picking him up, mate. It was a ghost. Was he? Fucking ghost, mate. Then, <laughs> come when somebody moves. Come yeah. when somebody moves, you hear their feet. Yeah. Or you hear a rustle with their strip on mate. It was like he just vanished. Lift. And he was four yards away from you, mate. I was like, oh no. So I was like, yeah. hunting, grab on him, uh, mate. Oh, mate, he was frightening. Was he? First corner came out, came in for that side, and I was remember Ken Hainham here thinking, ah, it's no bother. Gone. Wow. Like, he won the top. He won, I'm sure he won the Champions player. League. Top Milan scorer of the pool. Top scorer of the Euros one year. Czech Republic, wasn't it? Czech Republic, aye. Uh, he was a bra player. player. That's incredible, eh? Fucking hell, some names there. What other players that you played against that were exceptional? Hundreds. Well, that, to be fair, Kim it's like, mate, they're, they're all the same names. No, I don't know if they're getting shy all the time, do they? God knows, my, my, my mind's blank half the time. Yeah, Honestly, the God. What about he was rapid, wasn't he? No, he uh-huh. scored quite a few goals for Liverpool. Did you be- play against him? Maybe he did. I don't know. I'm thinking, he, would he be in the same kind of time that Michael Owen that played with Liverpool? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I saw so I played against Gary McAllister's Liverpool team, Michael Owen, so he would have played, he'd have been either in the squad, but yeah. it's like he, he says, like, see when you try to pinpoint and remember an individual in a, a certain game, mm. it's very difficult. You said Henri was... Oh, Henri was... He, he's the best I've ever seen. Did you say something about he, was got, he ran back and nicked the ball off? Oh, was no, it was top. me. The ball caught up to me and I took a touch. And, you know, and I, I was looking back to goal and I was taking a touch tight and I'm going to play it to my right back and my left back. And I went, as I went to kick it, it wasn't there. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck's that ball, isn't he? He just it. came and took it off me. And then the He'd sprinted down and thought, oh, I'm going to fucking get him. Neil he's Neil targeting Johnny. He's like, he's hopeless. He's, too, it he's too slow. <laughs> <laughs> took it away and I was like, fucking... But it was when he was in the, 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 the tunnel and he wore like the old school white shorts and yeah. all up, up high as fuck and he was like, I was thinking... Okay, he's six foot two easy like he's only an inch smaller than me and I'm thinking he's fucking rapid. gorgeous rapid everyone was just and I was like oh, oily like, oh and I was like fucking hell and like Sol Campbell he was like the same size only but wide uh-huh. and I'm thinking fuck I've got to play against him today 
And he, I just, it's just you just look in awe, like uh-huh. proper. I, when you when you're trying to describe a a perfect space of a footballer, that's how some of the elite players were. They just looked. I think that's the difference between Scottish Premier League and English Premier League. Is the athletic, physicality, the athletes. Oh. Aye. Mm. Aye, definitely. So what is that in terms of body or Athleticism, terms of size, everything, speed? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why can we not get to that? I don't know. They, they, but they, do you know what? Gordon Strachan was slaughtered for it. And I, I thought you had a totally valid point. Mm. I genuinely, and, and it's, I genuinely think it's a gene tool. But it's, every, it's how you live your life, not as well, more. Yeah, like. but if you look at your mum and dad, how many Scottish players have you met their mum and dad and they're that height? <laughs> no, it's true. Seriously? Uh-huh. I mean, you go to mainland Europe, mate. Well, I, I went, Stock, I, we went to Stockholm, mate, and I, I was like, mate, I went oh to Germany three, weeks, three, four weeks ago and watched the second Bundesliga team, right? Train. And their four goalies walked out, mate. The place went dark. <laughs> it was like, there were six, four, athletic, can right. jump like anything. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, four of them could play in the champ- championship in England tomorrow. Mm. Just big units, mate. I always found that we're going to like, Scandinavian countries and things like that for pre-season. You think, fuck it, man. Uh-huh. The size yeah. of these guys. Yeah. And but like, like you say, probably like six foot three, 80 kil- 85 kilograms or something. I lean. Fucking rip, lean as anything. Like, shift as well. I was like, ah, this is like, what, what is it? What is it? What is it? Why is that in Scotland? Why are we not a thing in Scotland? Because even if you look at your like, national team, you think of the, the guys that are actually Scottish, you know, the guys that are <laughs> pretend Scottish, <laughs> right? Tierney, Robertson. They're all quite small. McGinn, McGregor. McGregor. You're like sitting there hanging out. Oh, oh, very, oh, very, <laughs> very, very good footballers. And absolutely no question that, but there's none of them like. Scott McTominay's height. McTominay, Dykes, Chain, they're all the ones that all are from. All the ones that are from. Aye, they're more Scottish. Yeah, they're Liam Scottish. Cooper, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a great point, isn't it? I think Gordon Strachan had something in that, but he, he got slaughtered for it. Ugh, that's why I think my boys have got a it. chance. Just get the height for me, boys, you'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, you did I get a small player in Millwall. <laughs> no, you need to be six foot eight and horrible. What, 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 what season was Millwall? 2007 2006 6 2006 2007 right and I went down it and I did my ankle ligament straight away and I just felt this is this. and I got a phone call from Neil Murray who just said you fancy Norway Viking Stavanger team are in Europe fancy it I went yeah and that was it so Go you, on. did you not play Millwall at all then yeah I played some but Again, what was that I'd, experience like? Was that because I've played at the day and you oh, played at the day? Oh, uh-huh. oh, you you get same. Sh- you as an, a, an opponent get the same pelters as being a player. Oh, yeah, I yeah. was getting pelters for. Who being was the manager Scottish. then from Elmo? Uh, you jock. I was getting uh, pelters for yeah. being. Who Scottish. was the manager then? Um, Nigel Sparkman. Sparkman. Nigel yeah. Sparkman, Ray Wilkins were the. Oh, so Dennis Wise must have left before Danny then. Dyer. <laughs> Danny Dyer. Danny <laughs> Dyer. Danny Dyer and Ray Winston. We played the we played Mill at the day and both of us could have got promoted last day of the season. And Leeds won and Leeds got beat. It must Reed have been went full up. house, was it? Full house. If Millwall won and Leeds got beat, they went up. So both of us could have went up that day. And whistle blows at 90 minutes. Millwall's beat is 3 2. Leeds are getting beat. So, mate, they come on the pitch. And I've never ever had a fear like this in my life, mate. But it's, it's mate, it's monsters <laughs> running at you, mate. And I've never tried to get off a pitch so quick <laughs> in my life, mate. Actual shit on myself. But Leeds scored in the last minute to go up. So they're all coming on the pitch thinking they're going up and then the next thing, mate, you know what they're like? They've been told Leeds have scored. You can look at his back, I'm sure it's Bristol Rovers Leeds scored in the last minute and it's mayhem, mate. It's fucking pandemonium. I think they'll just start fighting with each other because obviously they thought they were going up and they weren't. Pandemonium. But we're, we're in the dressing room, mate, and you can hear all sorts going out, out on the pitch, mate, and you're genuinely sitting there shitting yourself that they're going to come in and batter you, uh, do you know what I mean? Ah, uh, that's brilliant. We rocked up in the bus and you walk up in any away game in your bus and you get the fans again and all that. Is that? That they actually were like <laughs> with the weapons that they were going to date with. And I'm sitting thinking, oh. and then one of the boys says, See if you score today, I bet you don't cut your ears to the crowd when you score. And I said, I bet you do. And I scored that day and I oh. run down the about that. <laughs> and fucking oh, hell, man. Yeah. Amazed me, I just opened up the door and run home because I, when I come out of that stadium, I'm like, kill you. And I was like, waiting oh, on you. Oh, I waiting on you. Oof. Up against Muscat. Oh. Even he was whispering to me, oh, I'm going to fucking break your leg. And I was like, Muscat you know, was wild, wasn't oh, he? Mate, he was a nut job. Uh-huh. Nice he boy, though. I've heard really that. Like, John uh, Higgins was his next I've heard he's man. a really good coach. Is, is that right? Is he not? He was I've Ange's never assistant. Seen, I've never seen. Ange supposed to call oh, his assistant see, manager. Right. Fucking, he was some player, boy. He, he, he did he not shack out a tackle, mm. that boy. Did you was see that? At uh, that time, you just get scared with kind of British football. No, I was actually excited about the opportunity to go and play in Europe, eh? 
and it was a good club. I looked at the stadium, brand new stadium, facilities were phenomenal. I thought, yeah, I fancy a bit of that. Flying to games, just different culture. Did you just move over there yourself or did you take family? No, I was on my own, so Why I just huh? away on my own. Well, and did it change your kind of opinions on football when you got over there? Aye. Uh, no, I think it changed me as a person. I thought taking in a different culture where you need to actually start changing your ways to them. You know, it, it was weird. It was weird, but I wanted to fight it for the first six months. Why do you do that? Mm. But I remember I got stopped by the post. This is mental, right? So I took, I don't know what but I had a nice car at the time that the lights would go automatic. You know, if it was dark, it would go yeah, on. Yeah, if it was light, uh -huh. it would. So it was, I'm no joking, mate. It must have been the 20th of June. Like it's nearly the sunniest day in the, the year. It was one o'clock in the afternoon and I got flagged by the post. I was like, I wasn't speeding. I was like, Post. Why have you not got your lights on? And I went, because it's June and it's one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> he went, but that's the rules in Norway. I said, but how did you see me coming in if my lights weren't on? Right? And he went, that's the rules. Put your lights on. And that was a, a, a kind of eureka moment for me. Just did, it, did what the rules say. Mm. Put my lights on. That was it. Like, I, I just couldn't get my head that they do things, f but this is the way their culture was, and I had, I had to fit in. They were not going to change. So, so it made what, what, what else is different for the UK in terms of their culture? Um, just just to, fit, just toe the line. See if we say, do not enter. We enter. Uh -huh. No ball games. We play ball games. Ball games <laughs> We've got that in our culture a wee bit that we go, you know, tell us what to do. Uh, so so they're, a bit, they're, they're about conformity from that point of view. Another thing they've, they've got as well, it's a socialist state, so there's no hierarchy. So it's not like you're a first team player and the young boys come and fix the goals, not. Everyone does. Everybody, everybody just in. chips in. So I actually quite like that. And that's how I like to be as a management staff. It's, it's no autocratic. It's, yeah. We're on this and it's all levels the same. So I Good. think that's the way to do it. Mm. Right or wrongly. Your Turkey. favourite mate? Aye. Turkey yesterday with that kebab, weren't we? Oh. Unbelievable. Turkey, what that like? Good, great country. I went there last they year. They never paid me my salary though, so it was... Nah, it's no, quite that, a common that, I think thing at some though. point, even I had that opportunity to go to Turkey. They're going to give you X, Y and Z a month. And everybody's like, they'll not pay you, big man. They'll not pay you. Mm. And then they just, they never ever took the opportunity. Yeah, I just I found it bizarre, eh? But I remember, they just didn't care, eh? So my, my club was run by Mafia. So it's not even like you can fuck it off and say, well, I'm not playing then? No, but they just say, right, you're in the, you're in the camp this for four days. I'm like, in the camp? And I'm not going in any camp. I was getting smuggled out a car with, with the, the thing here, because there's like security guys at the, 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 the with guns at the, the front of the camp. So I'm smuggling out, mate, just to go and see my missus for a couple of hours and then back in in the morning. Honestly. What is that? So like, the B, the B at a silver Mercedes pull up, then the black one, then the uh, silver one, and the the president would get the door open, for, or the, the, the ma president, the mafia guy, and there'd be two in front, two behind, and he would walk in. Wow. And so, what, would he speak to the players? Oh, no, no. So, you would, so if you were moaning about your... Wages? What, my salary. president wants to see you. You'd go in, mate, and it'd be like, you had a massive, huge cage with a big parrot in it, right? I was like, what's that? Oh, I bet, very, parrot. Honestly, this parrot must have had cancer. This <laughs> room, it was like, you know, stars in your eyes when you go through the uh -huh. smoke? And the president would just be sitting with his big high, you know, the big high chairs like Dr. Evil. Uh -huh. He said, there, uh, oh, it's okay. I was like, yeah, yeah, salary and that, translator. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Why you go, send you out again. So I'm getting it tomorrow. Never. Two weeks later, same meeting. Fucking hell. But mate, I was like, it's quite intimidating, eh? Because you're you're thinking you're normally going to like HR or something. Nah, it's not HR over there, mate. Guys at AK forty seven. So at the how, front do you, door. how do you eventually leave? Do you just have had obviously I've had enough, but do they again, let you go? Again, no pay me my salary. I'm a wah. See you later. It's kind of similar to shit if you wins. And does he and, and does he find it just right, okay, you can go? It wasn't the option, I just left. Right. Still but, looking but, for him. <laughs> but, but the page the page in bonus. Right, so if you won so, so if you won again, you would you just get, get a bag of money, like literally a bag of money. So that kept you going. So you were then going, it's not that bad, bad uh -huh. if you got that for winning again. So you, you would stay and then just thought, nah, I'll just head by Scotland. Bag of money. Then it was, it was a broom bag of money, mate. It was like something out of the films, eh? <laughs> and then China as well. China. Yeah. You've got a good experience in China, then. China was good. China, China was good in terms of the football stuff, like playing in the Asian Champions League and that. That was, that was good. 
But again, standards, professionalism, well, that's, technically amazing. That's, well, that surprises me, though, because you see the kind of Japanese players that come over oh, to Asian Oh, Chong Chies, though. Is it right? Chong Chies. So we, we play Japanese boys in the Champions League and in the Korean boys. So we beat the, cha- the Japanese teams. Um, and then we went and played a Korean team and they wiped the flare with us. Oh mate, they ran, they ran out of tap base, mate. Like you couldn't get, remember when we put, oh, we, we played I've Korea. This, I've said this before. We played Korea and they beat us 4 0. 4 0, and they fucking were like, it was all oh, bad. No, it was like, we thought Scotland, we're in a transitional period here. Mm. We should be okay with South Korea. There's been no talk of them. And bang, G Singh Park, number 13. You're like, holy they finished third shit. in the World Cup that year. Aye. Uh, that's they right. Were, Italy, didn't oh, they? you've Simon, so, I, I don't even know how to describe how good they were. Uh-huh. Like, mm. technically, it's how quick they were. You just did not get a minute. Mm. Do you know what it reminds me of? See the Celtic team they've got now? No, right. How they press you quickly. Yeah. Like they were doing that 25 years ago. Aye. And we weren't used to that yeah. kind of press and whatnot. But so when we, when we played the, the, the Korean champions, they beat us, I think, 4 1. And there was a there was a, Korea, a Croatian boy that we spoke to after the game because my mate in the team was Croatian, so we're speaking. And he said, uh, "I said, just fat." He said, "Oh, he said, see you tomorrow." He said, "We'll run round the track for an hour, get to that hour point, and then run round the other way for an hour." And said, "And nobody questions it." That's incredible, isn't it? Disappointing. And we all used to get two days off after games. <laughs> and if you only get a day off you're raging, you're raging. <laughs> <laughs> what about like how did you communicate that over there did you always have trans- and how, how what's your I kind of relationship he, with, I think he was doing the end shite, I think how he was how would he understand that in the accent by the way but see these translators <laughs> mate Probably can't be asked, mate, and they're just feeding me. I'm telling uh, you, he was doing me in. He we must used have to give that a heart, so we were off questioning the chairman. The chairman couldn't address him about getting my wages because we were on the same boat with hearts, no wages, and they had a translator. And we were asking questions, he was translating it to Romanov. Romanov was then chatting back, and you're like, What the fuck's he? And big Mary Sally, because God rest his soul, would say, Is what we were saying, the translator did not say yeah. anything like that to the chairman. <laughs> and you're like, Do you get that feeling? <laughs> Well, I was looking at the reaction of the coach and I was going, Never's been positive there. <laughs> now he looks raging. I'm going, this is, this is not right. Eh? Uh, so it was, uh, it was a bit, I was thinking, he's taking a mick out of me. Oh, any more like culturally different or bizarre things that you experienced? China, Norway. What was it like in China, like in terms of, obviously, this is a, a subject close to my heart here. Food. Food. Because well, Derek Reardon, I don't know if you've seen Derek, have you heard Derek Reardon speaking about it on here? <laughs> Oh, uh, go watch an interview back. Derek Reardon speaking about the food in China will blow your mind, mate. Did he love it? No, I hated it. He thought he, one of the reasons he was going over there is that because I love Chinese food. I love getting a Chinese over here, so I thought I was going over there to get a chicken. Co- it's like the food was fucking stinking. I actually loved it. Did you? Mate? I liked the food, but it was bizarre though. It was like some. My like, I used to hang about with this big guy. Big. He, he spoke about English. The lads. He was a nice enough lad. And do you know when you're sitting on a away trip? So we're probably an hour to the airport for Beijing and I'm just sitting there normally in Scotland that would be wine gums or whatever this guy's just pulled out a bag of chicken feet <laughs> right <laughs> so it's like you know like it just looks like that like chicken feet these wee anemic looking things is that to me I was like no you're alright mate is that like, I just mm? and other skin and other bone he just pulled out a perfect bone I was like that was unbelievable it was like you and your chicken wings on that programme <laughs> but Unbelievable, mate. I was like, oh, nah, you're fine for me, pal. But in general, I liked the, the, the food. Because eh? uh-huh. the, the day-to-day stuff, it was basics. You weren't getting sauces now, because sauces is basically a Western thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's less sauce now over there. Uh, that's what Deke said, though, mm. wasn't it? He was expecting, uh, obviously, curry he's, sauce. He's yeah. honey chilli chicken. Chicken, uh, <laughs> chicken balls. <laughs> <laughs> you got chicken balls, fried rice and curry sauce. £4.50 <laughs> special. Brilliant. No chance. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, came back to Scotland. Loving, Livingston under Gary Bowen. You, Gary Bowen, and Fozzie, you and Fozzie went into that. Uh, Again, playing for nothing. Playing for nothing, I remember Aye, that. Playing for nothing there, right? How did that, co- how did that come about? Just through the agent. We, we came back, me and Fozzie were just desperate to play games and just keep fit. And you're hanging on to your career. I knew my, my body was done. So I knew, I mentally, I was checked out before I even signed at Livingston. Uh-huh. Um, but I met a lot of good people at Livingston and whatnot, but uh, I was, I was. Gary Bowen can go, can't he? Do you know what you. He, he could go. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I wouldn't have wanted to mess no, with the guy for the end, but he was. Uh, I, I like Gary Bowen and he had like Scott, Scott Patterson he's kind of a good foil for him a wee bit more mm. relaxed but nah I was mentally done there right? did, did Scottish football change when you came back I know you had a short spell at Aberdeen as well meh meh same 
same stuff, mate. Same chat in the dressing room. Same part in the dressing rooms. This sort of stuff. Uh, but, <laughs> but again, I'm I'm at thirty one. I've been abroad right, now, right. and I'm just I just I'm I knew I knew I'm I'm just going to chuck this away. Mm. And then Fozzie left Limston and went and signed for Fulham. Who does that? Honestly, how does that go? Only Fozzie. Only Fozzie does, does that. Mate. And then get. I moved to. Fozzie could talk himself. I moved to Barcelona. Mate. No, his feet could. Uh-huh. What I know, a player, he's a good player. Uh-huh. What a player. Well, you say you're team Fozzie Livingston playing for nothing. The next thing he says for Fulham, you're like only Fozzie man. That's my reason, but some so man. Uh, would he be on your best pals in football? Well, I would say so. I. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a big network in, in, in football, I kind of keep myself myself. I, I, I do go to functions and golf days and whatnot, but I say I speak to Foz most days, I. Uh, his enthusiasm for football, mate, would I know, Kenny, s- Kenny speaks very really highly of him. Mm. Imagine they two try to get a word on each other. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't think they would listen to each other, mate, just be talking to each other, uh-huh. wouldn't it? Uh-huh. Kenny's intense, isn't he? Uh-huh. He's Kenny's always been that, he's always been no, that. That's, that's what makes, that what makes him tick, oh, eh? Mm. Uh, and then... Back over to Norway. We're nearly there by this has been good. It's been oh, it's been interesting. A half but uh eh, what about so it was the lower leagues in Norway? How would you how would you say talent in Norway lower leagues compared to the talent in Scottish lower leagues? Lower leagues, sorry. Well again, the difference and I don't I don't know if it was because we implemented it, but we were training four times a week. Which maybe you said that. Four times a week. So and the players were happy to do it. Yeah, and the facilities are two us or turfs. A training pitch, a match day pitch, floodlights, eight dressing rooms. Wow. And what league is that in Sorry? Fourth Division. Wow. 22 brand new Adidas Boz, boots, full full training gear, the best of the gear. So I would say the facilities mm. in, in, in Norway, they're, 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 they're everywhere. Astroturfs are everywhere. And I've not got some wee guy putting a padlock on them at four o'clock in the afternoon like they do in Scotland. Mm. I don't understand that. Nah, You've got all the facility that's put up with the public. I was speaking to um, somebody the other day in North Lanarkshire. They are, they've designed all their pitches, so they're going to be open most days now for kids to go and just play on the Astros. And that's something that we need to do across the whole... But again, though, see if you... Think of the psychology behind it. See if you put a padlock on something in a, in a, in a scheme. Yep. It's going to get snapped. See if you leave it open. It's not like a target for no. them. You're not letting us in there. Mm. We'll get in there. And just leave it open. Right. Then you put a big fence around it. And you padlocks know, and all sorts. Uh, because what happens is kids get it's a free facility. But what they do now is they put that padlock on so they can make yeah. money off it. Mm. But well, again, it's, it's, it's the government sense. put a lot of money back into the infrastructure, which I think we do fail on, which I think that has a knock on effect. Mm. Because how much a Scotland is working class? Majority. Yeah. So kid mums can't afford ninety quid a week a month for their kid to go to somebody's uh, football school. No, I'd agree with that. I think, I think, in my experiences up to now, the, the lack of good facilities in certain areas is, is quite telling. And I think if we're trying to improve the quality of the players we're trying to provide, back in the day, I know we can go say back in the day they played in grass parks and people say this, there is plenty of bits of grass to go and play football, but these are tough facilities are like 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Like kids will just go and play football if they're open, but when yeah. the minute they're shot, they're going to try and get underneath the bottom bit, they're going to climb over the top, maybe fall and hurt themselves. Just keep them open. They're not going to damage the Ashton tough. No. Good way to end it. It is. Fascinating, Mo. Thanks very really much. Really good. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for my coffee, by the way.